I'm anxious. I'm very anxious. The mailman is coming. Could be a minute from now. Could be two hours. But the mailman is coming with my new radio. I have been waiting for the radio. Uh, it is the Lab 599 TX Discovery TX 500. And a, a lot of you know I have the KX2, which is right here on the desk in front of me. Um, and I and I love the KX2. Uh, it's been a great radio for me. As far as portable radios, I think it is a fantastic choice. Um, but if you've seen my videos and the stuff I like to do, um, and with winter coming and wetter, wet, wetter months or months that are more wet. Yeah. So I have concerns about the KX2. I've always been very careful when I take it out and I always worry about it. You know, um, it's had some a little bit of light rain on it, um, just misting really. And I try to protect it as much as I can, but uh, it's always in the back of my mind um, because when you look at the KX2, let me just unplug it. And I have the protective side rails on, but that, that's really to protect from impacts. Um, when you look at the KX2, there's a lot of holes. Um, not just where the antenna and stuff plug into, um, but there's holes, there's cracks. Um, there's holes here, and I mean, I know I can put like a piece of tape on it and block it or something like that, but um, just because there's so much hole, that means that moisture and everything gets in there. And if you seal it up and moisture gets in there, then the moisture can't get out. Um, so, uh, but yeah, uh, the KX2 is a fantastic radio. It's uh, light. I have the battery in this radio. I'm probably going to take the battery out because I, I want to weigh this without the battery compared to the TX500, which does not have a internal battery. Um, so, but I want to, I want the T, the reason I went with the TX500 instead of the 705, which everybody's getting in, and the 705 looks so cool. It looks really neat. But for, I was thinking about it and I said, well, geez, I could get the 705 and that could be my, in shack rig for QRP because I only operate QRP. I don't operate anything else. And I could get to 705 and I'd, you know, it would be my at home rig. And I kept looking at it and thinking, you know, but I know if I got a radio that had those type of capabilities, I would want to take it into the field. So I decided that if I got the 705, I would, I probably would not take it out into the field. Um, probably less, I'd probably be less so inclined to than the KX2. Um, the 705 is much bigger, much heavier, um, takes up much more, more room in the pack and everything else. So I, I decided on the 705, um, if you saw, you know, I like to go out in the winter time. I like to go out in the snow. In fact, I much prefer going out in the winter time hiking than I do in the summertime hiking uh, and doing park activations. The winter time, I've dealt with the cold. You know, I've I've learned a little bit. I, I enjoy it. The summertime, the the trails are overgrown. Uh, the bugs are horrendous. The ticks are horrendous uh, in this area. I mean, it's. It's terrible. So being out in inclement weather seems, I, I just enjoy it more. Uh, I just do. So, and, and if you saw my video, I made the uh, snow cave and, you know, operated from inside the snow cave and everything else. So the TX500 with its uh, water resistance, it's sealed. It's not waterproof. You can't submerge it. I'm aware of that. But to be able to just set it in the snow if I needed to set it down, you know, or if I if it slid off my pad or whatever and, and got in the snow, uh, I wouldn't mind it. I, I wouldn't have to worry about it as much. Um, we went to Erie and I did a POTA activation on the beach up in Erie. And I was very careful. I set my radio on top of the case, hooked up and everything else. And when I came home, 
and took the battery out to charge the radio, sand fell out of the radio. And then I, I, that, that kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'm like, how did I get sand in there? And I've also come home before and uh, from being out in the woods doing a park activation, I've come home, set my radio down and had an ant crawl out of the radio. So that's my whole reasoning with going into the 70, not the 705, the Lab 599 uh, TX 500. So I'm very excited and uh, can't wait for it to get here. So it was about 12 minutes I had to wait. So it just came. Pretty excited. Peanuts. You don't want no peanuts. Uh, not gonna be able to get out there without making a mess, so let's put these right in the trash. I'm pretty excited. Manual. The speaker mic, that's not too bad. Looks decent. One thing about this type of clip, um, I was thinking when I'm operating out in the field, I can clip this to the Molly on my chest harness. Uh, and that actually might work pretty well. Look at that. Oh, so cool. So cool. There's the other, the other wires and cables. I'll need that because I know that there's an upgrade for it. Nope. I'm going to bring this up. And I can find a place to tear it open. Here we go. It's actually in there really well. There it is. Look at that. The little fold out feet. Oh, nice. Nice. Dial feels nice. It's not as uh, free spinning as the KX2, um, but it does feel nice. Uh, it does have a dimple on the knob, which the KX2, the knob that comes on the KX2 doesn't. Um, that's why mine is a 3D, a 3D printed one, which works really well. Um, it feels... It feels heavier than the KX2, just initial impression. Ah, they're 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 pretty close, but it does feel it does feel heavier. Um, sits on the desk in a nice angle. Uh, hang on one second. So I have my little uh, kitchen scale here. Let's put the KX2 on there, and it is. Uh, 15.9 ounces, 15.9. Let's get the KX2 microphone along with it. Let's do this. So 15.9 by itself and one pound, 5.1 ounces. That's with the, the KX2 and its microphone. Fold this down. One pound, 3.4 ounces. So it's definitely heavier, heavier. One pound, 8.3 ounces. So a pound and a half. Um, so it is heavier than the KX2, 
without the battery, but I do have the side rails on the KX2. So that list, okay, let's do this. How much is this? The cover, one pound, four ounces. One pound, one ounce. Let's try to put all this on here. I'm just doing this to see. So 1.6, well, one pound, 6.6 6 ounces. That's 1.8. So even with this, this is about, uh, it was saying 1.66. So that's about two ounces heavier. Uh, not quite, two ounces heavier. So you have that. Well, well, I'm super excited. Uh, I need to break out all these cables here. I'm super excited because there's an update for the radio that has an SWR graph. And the reason an SWR graph as opposed to just an SWR number is beneficial is that you can tune the antenna. So if your dip is before the frequency you want to operate on, you know your antenna is too long. If the dip is after the frequency you want to operate on, you know the antenna is too short. So you don't need to take an antenna, an antenna analyzer out into the field to build an antenna. If you set the frequency and you cut some wire roughly to the length you need, you could then look at the SWR sweep, figure out if the antenna, if that wire is too long or too short, cut it and, and tune your radio. Um, I do QRP in the field, and the best way to do QRP in the field, uh, and if you haven't watched uh, Josh's Ham Radio Crash Course's latest video about doing QRP, you should. He hit all the great talking points um, about QRP. But doing QRP in the field, you need a resonant antenna. There are antennas that work um, that aren't resonant, um, and they're, but they don't work as well. And there's antennas that are resonant that, that use coils or other things to tune the antenna, but you're compromising that antenna. The best antenna that I can tell you to use QRP in the field is going to be a dipole. I use a link dipole. The next best antenna that I can think of would be a 49 to 1 NFED. Um, it is resonant. Resonant, you don't need to use a tuner with it if you make it correctly, if you cut the antenna correctly and everything. Um, but yeah, those are it that antenna works great, but it does seem to be when I in my test, it seems to be a little bit quieter. The signal on the dipole is a little bit stronger. So, but that's what I have. So I need to uh first go put cut this off and put power pulls on this because power pull the world. And then uh, this is the upgrade cable, the cable for CAT interface and for upgrading the firmware. I need to do that. It also comes with the CW adapter. It comes with another spare adapter. I believe this is the, I need my glasses. I think this is the seven pin to make a data cable. Yep, that's the seven, uh, seven pin, so you can make your own data cable, which is great. I was gonna order one of those. And they also give you this one. This is the adapter to use a headset. They give you this as well. So they really do include everything you need, but I'm gonna get this cut power poles on it and get this puppy turned on so I can look at it. Well, I made my first contact. My first contact was to uh, November 5 Echo Sierra Tango. Are we still here? So the volume on the TX500 does seem a little low um, and there's new firmware and there's two settings. There's normal setting, which is one watt output on uh, audio. 
And then there's outdoor, which is three watt. I have it turned up to three watt, um, but the KX2 is definitely still louder as far as the speaker goes. But the benefit of this is you can have the speaker up closer to you. So I don't know. Um, I really didn't even have to read the manual that much. Uh, even to disable the beep, the key beep on this is really annoying. It's really loud. It's a really loud beep, beep, beep every time you press a key. Uh, and it doesn't look like there's an, a, volu a volume adjustment for it. At least I haven't seen that. And I didn't see it in the manual because I did look that up. Um, so I just disabled the key beep. Uh, it's, it's just way too annoying. Um, it would be nice if there was a volume adjust for the key beep suit. Because I do like key beeps, but I do like them to be really faint. Uh, that would be annoying. If I was doing that and my wife was in the other room, uh, she would be yelling at me for making for annoying her, I'm sure. Uh, it annoys me. So, but uh, yeah, I, I soldered and crimped my power pole connections for the radio. I left the, cable, the cord as long uh, as it was. I just cut the ends off. It's about uh, a three foot long cord, which I think is plenty long enough if it was a uh, if it was longer, I probably would have chopped it and made it shorter. I hate long power cords um, for no reason. Um, and with power pulls, if you ever need a longer cord, you can always just add a little extension in. But uh, this one, I think, is a perfect length. The screen is really nice. Um, looks good. Just moving around the menus and stuff, just from watching a few of the videos that I've watched online, uh, this was actually really, it was really easy to do. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I updated the firmware, um, literally plugged the cable into the computer. It recognized the COM port, and I uploaded the latest firmware. I tried the SWR scan, which is pretty cool. Um, just to show you here, let me uh, let me get off frequency. There's nobody on frequency here, so let's see. Let me switch them. Okay. So there's nobody on frequency. If I press tone, it gives me a tone and will give me the SWR reading. So I got an SWR of one to one. If I hold tone, it produces a small tone and gives you an SWR plot, which is pretty cool. So let me go uh, down. Make sure there's nobody on. That's good. Let's do an SWR pro here. Give it a second and bam, again, flat, which I know my antenna is pretty good. Now, let me go up or down to, let's take it out of, put it in lower sideband mode. Make it up higher in the band. Okay, so I know my antenna is not good on uh, the upper end of 80 meters. Let's see. Let's do a plot. SWR is climbing. Actually, not as bad as I thought. Not there. That's good. Let's go up a little more. I think. That's our uh, frequency, the Aries we use for Aries communications. Let's just do a quick tone. It's going to be a 2.4. And let's do the scan. Yeah, so I think over here is the actual frequency I'm using. Um, so I think that's it's up there. So yeah, pretty cool feature. It should be really useful. Um, so far, the radio has been, you know, very cool to, to play with. I love the connections. Um, and I'm really excited about being able to take this out in the field and not have to worry too much about it. I do have a little case for that um, that I'll show you in a little while. Uh, I bought a, a case that was recommended for all the users recommended it. Um, and it's, this supposedly fits right in there. I haven't actually tried it yet. So I'm going to try that and maybe try to make a few more contacts. But I'm really excited. Um, yeah, what can I say? Yeah. So that's it so far. It's the, 
TX500. Uh, I've only had it a few minutes, literally, and I'm just super excited about a number one, a new radio. It's always nice to have a new radio, but I'm very excited for this radio. Like I said, uh, firmware update went like that. It was super easy to do. Um, so far, the menus are easy to navigate. Um, I'm sure there's going to be things that I'm going to have to look up. I know a CW, there's some tricks that you have to do uh, to get that set up properly. But uh, just to be able to get on the air and find a station and be able to switch bands, it was super easy. And uh, I'm really excited about using this. I can't wait to try this with headphones and my uh, a little headset that I have. So I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Tang Oscar Mike, 73. Take care. Uh, willing to share some more time with us there. And it's good to hear from you again today. And once again, thanks to your Air Force Service, Alpha Echo 7, Alpha Fox Drive, 72 to you. And we'll clear with you now. There was somebody else in there, uh, QRZ, this is W6BA8. Hello, this is Sierra Juliet, Papa. Okay, um... Uh, thank you. You're also five and nine. Just a great signal, Camille. My name is Don Delta Oscar November. Don, a beautiful five nine. Sometimes five nine. Over nine. Uh, back to you. Over. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tango Oscar Mike.